Hey guys, I am back in the RV again and uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to change the coolant and uh, for those of you that uh, don't know this is a, a 2001 American coach that I'm working on. It's a vehicle that I purchased for my family and uh, I'm maintaining it getting ready for a trip and we're changing all the fluids and uh, I'm gonna teach you guys how to do it too. So uh, today again we're doing a coolant flush. Uh, it's really just draining the, radi uh, the radiator. I'm thinking my Pittsburgh, my Pittsburghese, we say radiator and a lot of you say radiator. Um, yeah, you gotta excuse my Pittsburgh language. So there is a radiator drain, uh, it's called a petcock, that you loosen and you drain the fluid out pretty standard car stuff but the unusual part at least for me because I'm new to diesel work is there is a um, cartridge there's actually a coolant filter that you can change and then there's some additives too so we need to talk about that in this video on what type of additives to run uh, what type of coolant to use and then um, uh, there's actually two different types of additives. You can use a fluid type or you can actually buy a filter that has it in it. So that's the important part about this. It's not just a drain and fill like we do on our cars. Okay, so first thing, 50-50 um, ethylene glycol and water or a propylene glycol based antifreeze, either one. Uh, pretty standard there. Uh, as far as the type of antifreeze to use, there's some numbers. We can talk about those in a minute. Uh, actually, let me get that piece of paper. Throughout this owner's manual, I wrote down a, a lot of stuff here, and uh, they're actually telling you there's some part numbers for those of you that want the exact coolant numbers. It's TMCRP329 or TMCRP330. I'm assuming that's some type of fleet guard uh, low silicate antifreeze. Well, I did a little bit of digging and there's some other numbers it has to meet. It says um, ASTM 4985 or GM 6038M and um, I found some antifreeze at the local parts store that had this number on it. It said meets or exceeds this number and it was just a regular green antifreeze. Uh, the antifreeze that was in here was a mixture of the red and the green. So. Um, I'm not sure what this came with, what color, and uh, the stuff that I put in was compatible with both and it did have this number. So I'll show you the type that I bought and then uh, what we need to discuss is that it holds between 8 and 15 gallons of antifreeze and um, there is another peacock on the engine block that I did not drain and um, I'll show it to you. I think it's actually there to drain the block and if you drain the block then you'll get even more out. It's what I should have done. I didn't. Uh, so some of this we're, we're not going to be able to show but I'll discuss it because I did the coolant flush but I didn't change the filter. And so I'll show you how I did it and then we'll do the filter together. Now there's um, different filters for this. WF uh, 2070 and WF2074 is what I have written down. Let me get you to the chart in the book for that. All right, so here's the chart, and uh, the type of additive is called a DCA4. Uh, there is a liquid, and then it can come actually in the filter itself. And um, the research that I've done, it, it actually lists these in units. It says the recommended concentration level for DCA4 is 1.5 units for every. 3.7 liters or one gallon okay so remember that for me it's gallons for some of you you guys deal with liters 1.5 units per gallon the WF2070 the one they tell you to do every 6,000 miles it comes with two units of DCA4 the 2074 which is the highest concentration of units is the one that I purchased for doing a complete system flush. So it's empty. This is the one I'm going with right now, the 2074 filter. And of course my neighbor's cutting the grass, but you guys are gonna have to ignore the lawnmower. Uh, question for me is, does this shut off valve, can I do it by hand or do I need a wrench? Nope, it's plastic. 
no problem at all. Turn that valve to three o'clock and nine o'clock and it was at 12 and six. So definitely something we don't want to forget. Uh, there will be some coolant that comes out of this, I am sure. <clears throat> of course, it just went down my armpit. And the one that came off of there was a 2071. And I'm putting in a 2074. I've already lubricated the O rings. That's a little bit different on the inside. Why doesn't that fit? inside o-ring let's compare these two this one doesn't have an o-ring on the inside and this one does I wonder if I can can I just take that off oh yeah <laughs> that's not an o-ring that's a that's a plug rookie mistake here guys and that is that is not an inside o-ring that is a rubber plug <laughs> so yeah take the rubber plug out of the middle okay guys <laughs> okay let's try that again all right this should fit fine now And then, of course, don't forget, open the valve back up. Okay, back at 12 and 6. 3 and 9 is off, 12 and 6 is open. And then we'll start it, and of course, make sure we have no leaks. Alright, so did you see um, in that last segment, I, I showed the filter, of course it wasn't leaking, and then I pointed to a pickhawk that was right underneath the lower rad hose. I'm pretty sure that that's your block drain, and that is something that I didn't do, okay? I'll be clear about that. When I drained and filled this thing, I just went at the rad itself and not the block. So if any of you guys are doing this in the future for this 8.3 Cummins, um, I'm pretty sure that you want to drain that too and that will just help you in getting all of the old antifreeze out of this thing. Now what I did is I drained the rad and then I filled it, like I said, with water, ran it, drained it again. Uh, that works too, but better to drain the whole thing. Let me show you on the rad where the drain is and then the fill and then that's pretty much it. So from my engine bay just to the left, you can see the air intake, that's my intercooler hoses. And then just below that, there is your pecock to drain the rad. And so it's real simple, just turn the valve and let it drain. I put a five gallon bucket underneath and I filled a two gallon bucket. So make sure you have enough, you know, a simple drain pan for a car is not gonna work. And uh, that's pretty much it, drain it. And then also, 
there's some warnings, especially if you drain the block, there's some warnings on having air in the system and um, it wasn't real clear on what they were removing for the air. It almost looked like they were removing this or maybe the valve behind it. Let me see the 3 8 hex nut right there in the back. That would be your air bleed right there. You could take that out and you could bleed the air out of the engine. Another way that it can be done on this one, and this is the one that I used, there is a, 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 um, an air bleed. I, I'm pretty sure that that's why this is here. That's what I used it for, that I was able to um, bleed out the air through here. Now, I guess the one on the cylinder head would be a little bit better because the thermostat could be an issue that with the stat closed, if there's not an air bleed in the stat itself, which a lot of them have, then this may not get all the air out. But it's good to know about that piece in the back. Um, I did not do it, but uh, if you drain the block, I'd recommend that you maybe take that one out to bleed the air out of the system. Uh, the fill part of this, guys, real simple. We have a coolant reservoir, which is down a little bit. I need to fill this back up and then you have this this is is um, what do they call it um, Man, I can't remember the name of it but that's it we fill it up from here and um, I'm actually going to change this rad cap too this is a 15 psi cap all right so the cap that I just bought this one is actually a 16 psi that makes me a little bit uncomfortable this the one I took off was 15 uh, it's made by Spartan though and oh, it's called a surge tank. So this is a surge tank. And um, I, I, I'm okay, I guess, with one PSI difference. I couldn't find a, a number. The, one of the books said to use a minimum of seven PSI. So they didn't give me a max number. Uh, new rad cap, we'll save the old one. I think this one's okay. Uh, the reason I replaced it is I was, Again, concerned about this overflow bottle not taking the coolant in, but I did describe to you guys that I, I had a split right there in that hose and I just cut back some of it and put it back on. So um, two more things and then we'll wrap this up. Uh, what I wanna show you guys is how to check the low coolant uh, light and um, the warning. So if we're low on coolant, there's a warning and it actually tells you how to do it right here on the, um, in the underhood area of the engine. It actually tells you the low cooling coolant warning system to test, remove the wire from the sender at the rad or surge tank. And then uh, there should be a buzzer inside that goes on. So let's, let's do that. Let me show you how to check that. So that low coolant light right there, that's what we want to see. When I go unplug that, I want to see that come back on and I want to hear this buzzer going off again. I think it's this one. Could be that one. Let's unplug this one, see what happens. Well, it's not the three pin one, guys. The three pin one would be uh, some type of coolant sensor. I just set my check engine light. So it's not that one, it's this one. Two That's what we want to hear. Low coolant light is on and it's beeping at me. Check engine lights off. All right, plugged everything back in. No check engine light. Don't unplug the three pin one, it's the two pin. My low coolant light did work as designed. I'm out of breath from running back and forth. That's 40 feet. Anyway, uh, last piece is the coolant that I use and I, I'm not marketing for these people. This was just bought at a local uh, auto parts place by my house. I bought it at, where did I get this? Advance Auto. So it's made by CarQuest. It is the green stuff. And um, it says that all makes, all models, all colors, so you can mix it with whatever's there. So that's cool. And then the biggest thing, guys, was on the back. That would be the one to look at, guys, and that's where I cross-referenced my numbers, and I felt comfortable using this antifreeze, given that it does meet or exceed the numbers that I found listed um, on the owner's manual. If, if I could have gotten what the actual 
coolant recommendation was, um, I would have bought that. Uh, I, I'm a very, very big fan of using factory fluids, especially with a big vehicle like this. Um, but I'm comfortable with what I used. Guys, let me know if you have any questions. You can post them in the in the uh, comment section of this video. Make sure that you read the description of this video because I'll post other links for repairs and maintenance on this RV. They'll be listed under here as well. Almost forgot, how could I forget this? It, it comes from doing things out of order and not doing this start to finish. Um, make sure when you do this coolant flush and change that you run the engine, get it up to operating temperature, keep an eye on your on your water temp gauge and make sure it's not overheating. If it starts overheating on you, that's an indication of an air pocket. You want to shut it down, let it cool off, take that little valve I showed you on top of that cylinder head off, or the one on the upper rat hose if you have that, burp it back out, fill it back up, start it up again. You don't want to be out on the road after doing a coolant flush and have it air an air pocket and damage the engine, okay? Very, very important that you guys do that. So again, thank you for your time, guys, um, and I'll catch you next time.